Welcome to our podcast, Charting the Course, presented by Emmanuel Church Apostolic Community. Our podcast will be presented by gifted teachers that are called, anointed, and appointed to expound upon the Word of God. We will be discussing various topics that are relevant to living a holy life today according to the Word. Thank you for joining us again for another episode of Charting the Course. I'm Sheila Robinson, and today Karen Fair is joining us again. Biblical self-care for the believer. And we'll like to continue that aspect today. Um, Karen did tell us that self-care was intentionally doing um, whatever it takes to care for yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritual. And last time we talked about the mental and the physical aspects of that. And also how you say the Bible is our manual, how to live this life. You did give us some good examples and some scripture regarding that. So today we'll like to, um, if you would reiterate that a little bit, and then we'll like to move on. Yes, ma'am. So I always say that the, the word of God is our employee handbook. And it gives us the, not only does it, give us instructions as to, as to God telling us what he expects from us, but it also gives us the information we need to know what we can go ask for. Um, it's, it's very difficult, when, and, and I'll use the natural sense, it's very difficult when you work a job and the job can tell you what they require of you, but the handbook is for you to know what you, what's expected of the job. Um, this is not just, this is a, not a one-way relationship. This is a two-way relationship. So the scriptures will give us, tell us what God requires of us, but it also gives us promises that he has made to us that we can turn around and say, but your word says this, God. Um, so when we talked about mental health, one of the things that I wanted to bring back was Romans 12 and, 12 and 2. It tells us to be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind. And that is what the word of God can do. It is able to transform our minds. When we talked about mental mm -hmm. health, um, it can help us to break destructive mindsets. Um, and a lot of times when you talk about mental health, it has a lot to do with how you think about things and how you process the things that happen around you. Um, and we can kind of collectively put that together with our emotional health because your mental health and your emotional health are tied together. Yes. Because how you feel about things reflect in, how, how you think about things reflect in how you remo emotionally respond to things. Um, and Second Timothy tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. And God has, not, God has given us love, power, and self-control to replace fear. Because fear can be very paralyzing, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Fear can cause us to stop in our tracks. Yes. And typically when you would know how to respond, when you would know how to think, when you would know how to conduct yourself, fear can cause all that to go out the window. And your responses and your thinking patterns can be affected. So the word of God tells us that he said, I will keep you in perfect peace. This scripture has saved my life. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> and helped keep my mind wrapped in my head for years. I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Many times when everything seems to be up in the air, thrown up in the air and you can't tell the, your front from your back, that scripture has always helped me pull myself back in yes. and realize that if I get into the word of God and just start reading the promises of God, God promises this, God said this about different situations and different circumstances. It pulls my emotions back in. Yes. Because you know, when your mind is, when your mind go to the left, your emotions want to go to the right. Yes. And the two don't want to coincide with each other. But when we talk about, the first thing we need to realize is that we're not going through this. You're not alone in this, in this you're not alone in this walk. Yes. Whether people want to admit it or not, there are people that are going through the same things you're going through. Sometimes they may not know how to articulate it or they may not even feel like it's relevant to say. But many times you are not alone in this situation because number one, God is with you. Yes. And that has been my one consolation is that as long as I don't have to do this by myself, I'm good. I can make it. 
if I know that I don't have to do this by myself. And that's the hope we have in Christ Jesus is that we don't have to do this by ourselves. Yes. He is always with us. Um, Philippians 4 and I believe it's 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If this ain't a battle cry, they make you want to take your bra off and swing it up in the air. <laughs> to say, I can do all things through Christ who yes. strengthens me. Yes. This, that's a moment when we come to the realization that that's our battle cry. Lord, I need your strength. I need you to touch my mind. I need you to touch my emotions. I need you to touch this body physically. It's a reminder that there's nothing too hard for God. Right. Didn't say there's nothing too hard for you. Let's get that correct. Let's understand that there are things that are too hard for you, yes. but nothing is too hard for God. And we know with him, we can make it through. He's able to love on us and care for us and comfort us and refresh us and restore us because that's what he does. That's who he is. And as you begin to lean into him and get to know him more, you'll realize that that's what he loves to do. You know, many times we call on our friends and we're looking for comfort. We're looking for confirmation. We're looking for all these things from people who need it just as much as you do. Yes. But if we turn to God, God is never, he's the, he's the phone that is never busy. How the old, the old school lady used to say, he's the, he's the, uh, we'll say, within your bosom, you have a phone, that old school song. <laughs> wherever, whatever, wherever you are, he's not, you're not walking alone. He's not far. He's not a, he is not a number that you can text or that you can call and you get a busy signal. He is always there standing with arms outstretched yes. to heal us and love on us emotionally, physically, and mentally. All righty. That is really good. And far as um, spiritual, um, give us some scripture regarding our spiritual self-care because you, know, you covered uh, the emotional, the mental, and the physical. Mm -hmm. and just to shed a little light on the spiritual side. So when we talk about spiritual wise, spiritual care involves things that will help us to grow in our faith. This is not what you, physically what you eat. This is things that we take from the word of God. Those foundational scriptures that have kept us. And those scriptures can be different for each one of us. Those scriptures, though, our, what we call our go-to scriptures. When things get tough, when things get, when, when we find out that we need something from God, we all have our go-to scriptures that, we, that are in the back of our head, that I don't care if you're sleeping in the middle of the night, you can quote it in your, in your sleep. Because those are scriptures that we have, foundational scriptures that we have grabbed hold of. And we have, they have, they have helped our faith in times when we didn't know what to do. Um, you know, doubt and fear can rob us of a lot of things. Doubting who God is, doubting who we are, doubting our competency, doubting our abilities. Those things can, can keep us from being who God called for us to be. Spiritual care involves the things that help us to, uh, John 31, excuse me, John, it says, for God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how much he loves us spiritually, that he gave his son that we would have eternal life. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he wants us to be whole. Yes. And this process of wholeness is not a overnight thing. It's not something to happen when you go down in the water and you come back up. But this is an ongoing process. Wholeness is an ongoing process. And we're always going to be taking off stuff and putting on stuff and taking off stuff and putting on stuff. Yes. But that's part of the process. You know, as you, as you go a little further and you learn and God shows you a little more things about yourself, then you can take off some stuff and you put on some stuff. And as you go a little further, you take off, you put on. So he is our source. Yes. He's our strength. He doesn't want us to look like where we've been. Let that sink in. Because mm -hmm. we all know where we've been. Yes. But we thank God we don't look like where we've been. Yes. And that's because of Christ. That's because he has taking care of this body and he's taking care of this mind and he's taking care of us spiritually. Yes. So those are the things that we, we talk about when we talk about uh, self-care for the believer. Thank you so very much, Karen. You have really shed a lot of light 
on that. And the good part you say, this is a process. This is a process we have to have self-care in order to be able to serve, knowing that, hey, if we are of Christ and we have the Holy Ghost, that we have to serve others. But we have to know it's okay to take care of ourselves. And if we don't take care of ourselves, we're not going to be able to serve others or do the things that God have called for us to do. So we thank you for shedding a light on that. We thank you for all the scripture references and to know it's what we need. Thank you for joining us for this segment of Charting the Course. Thank you for tuning in today to our Charting the Course podcast segment. We welcome your comments, questions, or any topics you would like to have answers to. Join us next time as we continue to chart the course according to the word of God.